All right. Uh, welcome back, everyone. It's been a while since I've done a map video. Um, I've been learning, relearning Ark and Forge as they had a big update, and I didn't want to do a video until I was really comfortable with building within the new setup, and I think I'm ready. So uh, I'll give you a quick overview of how to make a map with the new Ark and Forge setup. So uh, we're starting today uh, it with uh, the idea is to make a, a mine, uh, like a precious metal mine. Uh, in in Dark Return, I call it tritium, which is a, a very heavy material that's used for armors and swords that's unbreakable. So that is the goal, and the goal is to do it in under 30 minutes. So let's see what we can do. So um, first off, here's the whole uh, tool set. No, oh, it doesn't look like you get my cursor. Uh, all right, we are back. I got the cursor. So uh, let's start uh, with some quick basics. All right, uh, the everything's moved over the asset browser. In fact, wow, it's been so long. I don't even remember what the old Ark and Forge was set up like, um, but. The new one, uh, we've got the asset browser, which is where we can find all the different things that we use to build the map. Uh, the hand is definitely new. The old Ark and Forge used a round uh, wheel around every object, and now we're using the hand, though I think there might be some new stuff in the works. So uh, I guess if they change it again, I'll do another video. But uh, the hand allows us to like manipulate things, change things different colors, move the layer up and down, uh, change the lighting, and so on. So we'll just sort of cover stuff as I start using it. So the first thing we're going to do is let's lay down some natural stone, dark rock, so that way we know how big our map's going to be. Let's do 30 by 40. And uh, I'll, I'll show you something really cool that I found out recently is uh, that you can do, um, so we put this one over and, you know, whenever you do patterns, you tend to get these repeated things that you see over and over again. So one of the goals of making a good map is to hide that. And so you can go to tiled noise and noise on. And what that does is that breaks it up a little bit. And almost like sort of a camouflage here. So see, we can do that. And then all of a sudden, we've got two different textures going on there. We'll go up to uh, brightness, make it a little bit darker so it matches everything else. And boom, see, automatically we've got a little bit more variation there in the in the background. And the real trick is to find stuff that uh, that has a completely different texture base to to really break it up so you could do like a cobblestone texture do the same thing tiled noise noise on change noise scale make it way bigger and then we'll go to darken it up a little bit but we want to leave this one a little bit lighter and then also and I can come in here and sort of mess with the opacity to see where I want it. Because I just want to add some more texture to things. Alright, so now we got our rock base. And I think under natural stone here I saw, yes, a mine floor. So, uh, one of the big things that's helped me uh, since the last time I used Ark and Forge was learning how to use uh, shortcut keys. And uh, that's really sped stuff up, especially when you're looking to move things up or down uh, in the list uh, or in the layers of the stuff that you've set down. So uh, I have it set to Control B to turn it to a brush. I like the soft brush. We're going to make it as big as possible. Mm, maybe not as big. And here we've got, so I'm just going to start figuring out where the basic edges of this mine are. Now, I haven't done a sketch. I haven't done any planning at all. So we're just going to roll with it. And so make a tunnel here. I saw this neat image of 
what a mine, like a professional mine, actually looks like. And it's not anything like you see in D&D. It's super uh, organized and uh, not that they're chasing veins. They're instead like just sort of systematically going through a place. And so uh, let's sort of try to emulate that in this one. So I'm going to go up to two so it's almost a whole brush. And then I'm going to have these coming out like they are going after different veins of the ore. Open it up there. I'll do one more this way. All right, so we got a sort of basic mine here. Now, obviously, we got to have an exterior part of this mine, so we'll just put down this dirt and uh, another thing I've learned is, uh, so you can, so see I selected this texture here, I hit control B again, and it just instantly turns it into a brush. And then I'm going to bring down the opacity in here, I'm just going to sort of paint out as if this mine is going out a little bit. I'll come to grass, I always like darker grass, paint this in. maybe some of this grass now sometimes when you select a new thing and you go to the brush it's gonna redo everything it's not gonna remember what you had and the trick here is see I'm just sort of painting down little bits to to break this up you almost not even gonna see the dirt when it's all said and done Oops, there we go, it didn't save my opacity. I want it real light, just not to give it the hint that it's coming out. All right, so got an outside bit of grass. Don't like that there. All right, and we got the mine set. So next thing we need is some walls. Uh, a big thing they did recently is they went through uh, I say recently, it was a couple months ago, and they reorganized everything, and it's very easy for me to find the things I want to put in now. Uh, uh, you can see on the left here, so these are the lines, so these are like walls, fences, stuff like that, uh, and it's very easy to find what you want. Now, if I can remember, I love using these cliff walls. Uh, can just easily bend it like that make some nice stuff this one here I think is my favorite and I go to line freeform and so we'll start this right here And so I draw that and then instantly see so you've got like this nice wall to your dungeon, but it doesn't match the outside rock. So I'm going to come up under the image manipulation tools, got darken it just a tad. And then I think if we get rid of the saturation, it will. And look at that. Just instantly blends in with the outside so I don't even have to do any more work. Now to to keep that on all the other walls I select it again and I go to build line freeform and it's going to draw it just like I saved it there and then see I can start building from there take that right outside and off to the right and then we come back this way now there are a few little bugs with using freeform tool um, this one's shadows don't stick out as far but as you can see 
it actually sort of jumbles up the the rock wall which I mean you only really notice it when you're really in deep and then it on the drop shadows here you can see it sort of has these little artifacts uh, but we will fix that have no fear So now I'm just gonna oh, gotta get it lined up. Just go through here, see how long of a line I can have. Now I like to give it like a little bit of wiggle as I'm doing it, and that gives it a less uniform line. You know, you don't want it to look like straight walls look like it, they've been hewn into the stone. Now if you use fantasy grounds or uh, foundry, anything like that, when you export it, this wall is going to automatically give you a uh, line of sight. and. Uh, don't know about Roll20, it's been forever since I've looked into that. Ever since I went with Fancy Grounds, I've just been part of their ecosystem happily because it does every single thing I want it to do as a virtual tabletop. Alright, and just like that, We've got the layout for a dungeon, uh, or for a mine, set of mines. Now, uh, I will show you another trick of mine. So over here, you can make a hot bar of your favorite stuff up in the top right here. I'm going to click. Uh, it's just uh, the Midnight Black, or is it Abyss, or is it named Black now? I'm not really sure. We're going to turn that to a brush soft brush we want it down about like this and I tend to like around I think six maybe all the way up to one and then what I do is I just paint along these walls and it one it sort of hides where it did that weird thing with the artifacting on the shadows but it also just makes your walls pop. Doesn't have to be perfect, though you do have to do it in one stroke because if you paint over it's going to start getting darker and darker and then that can sort of stand out. Now this is one way of making it look like it's lit, giving it depth, but after this we're going to also Do one other thing, and that's put down some lighting. Now I'm noticing as we're doing this that this cliff face I put down is not considered a wall. So uh, this is good. I'll show you some problem solving here. So if I want to get to that, can I double click through? Yep. So your that right now the shadow is on top of that wall. So I double clicked it twice and it went to the one below it. I could go to layering tool, layer, and then move it to object. And then see it pops it up above that shadow. And you can tell by how much lighter it is there. So let's see if we can do that. Yep. That double click, object layer. Now if you had done these in a whole bunch of sections, this would be... A bit more of a nope. I made the shadow an object layer. You could control Z it. All right, so I'll show you another bit of problem solving. Oh, I did get it. Well, let's say you can't get it. Another thing you can do is you can click it on lockdown, and then that locks it, and it's still there. But then you can, uh, since it's no longer being able to be edited, you can get right to the one below it. Move to object layer. Move to object layer. One of the things is as you get to know this uh, tool set, you'll uh, 
you won't make rookie mistakes like thinking that the cliff side is a wall. Oh, got the wrong one again. Double click. And you can tell what you have selected because it shows up over here in the hand. Got just one left. Layer move to object. All right, so there we go. We got this now. Now let's move on to the next dressing. Is let's do some uh, some lighting. They got a great tool here that's place a standalone lighting. And uh, so it's set that right there. I'm gonna go to uh, set radius. Let's do a pretty big radius and let's do set color you can see it's sort of like a mustard yellow try to get where it's a little bit brighter but not too of course you can go just with white that might be a good option here so we got this light here are these blocking the light? You can tell that. Oh, allow light through. So we. Another thing I, we have to go do. Let's go tell all these. And when you first put down that first one, if you go ahead and check to make sure it's on the right level, make sure it's blocking the light. If you want it to block the light, uh, that can save you some time later on. But. Shadow. And this is going to matter later on when we're setting down uh, torches and things like that. Because you're going to want it to, to not seep through to the back side. All right. Now another thing that we got is it's a little light for a mine. So let's go to time of day. Just darken it down just a bit. Now I'll make our lights show up more. So we'll go place a standalone light. We obviously don't want it here. I sort of like the default color in here. It's a nice one. So I'm going to control C, copy it. Just place this in a couple different sections. And then what we're going to do is place one here, select it, and we're going to change the color to something very dim. Because one of the things that people like is they like some variation in the lighting. It just makes things feel more interesting. Uh, you do it in paintings and you do it in map making. You know, maybe up that. I'm just going to pop a couple of these blue lights in different places, just like the yellow. Try to make it look random. I'm control Z when they're not where I want them to be. There we go. So we're making this main passage pretty well lit, and then some of these other ones down on the end darkened. All right, so we got the mine set up here. And I feel like we're missing some rubble. So we can go over back over to textures. And this is not under rock, but I've got one that I like, cobblestone and tile. I use these rocks for uh, whenever I'm putting down rivers. I put this down first. I want pretty small. I want it barely showing up. There's another rock one that I can show you all. What if we put these on the end like this is the like there's still some veins of 
material here. Once again, I, normally I have a vague idea of what I want, and today I was just more worried about getting my recording stuff set up and getting on and making a video. I didn't really make a plan. But there you go. So now each of these, I didn't mean to select everything, each of these little things has a little bit of ore at the end of it. How does that look? All right, let's see what pops up when we search for stone now so the first thing that's shown up is very easy to import your own images which is super great those are always the first ones that show up scrolling through looking for stone of course there's a ton of stuff on here hmm. not seeing it might be under rock There's a there's a setting that has these like little broken stones that I definitely love to paint down onto stuff. But obviously don't love it enough to remember its name every time. Here's a stone that's this is a nice big decorative stone, and what you can do is you can hold down shift when you click, and that will place it down in a different way and with a slightly different uh, color and things like that so it's definitely a quick way to populate an area all right but I'm not seeing the stones that I was talking about we'll do one more quick run down through textures to see if it's under cobblestone and tile. What it is is it's these small stones that are uh, it, all it is is the stone. Of course when I do this uh, aha pebbles that's what it is. So control B for brush. I'm going to do a soft brush Let's see if I, I like the way this looks. I'm not sure about it. Maybe if we darkened them up a bit. That might be good. Alright, so now I've selected that hit control B. Now the only problem with the soft brush is as you can see it sometimes leaves soft rocks on there. You know what? I'm gonna... Hmm. I just don't know if this is working. I think I'm gonna delete those out. I'm just not a fan with, of the way that that is popping up. So we've got a mine. It needs one more thing. Ah, I know. mushrooms. Now I have some that are my personal ones that I made. Sometimes in a cave I like to make these and make them the uh, the part that's lit up that's glowing. It's always neat but I think these are just going to be mushrooms working off standard light. Alright. That looks pretty good. Still want one more thing. I know we're approaching 30 minutes here. 23 minutes. It's not a race. I'm just trying to show you that you can quickly put together a map for your players in under a half an hour. single. I feel like we need a couple more mushrooms just to give this pattern make it look less like a pattern. There we go. Oh, I know another thing that can work. So one of the 
I like sometimes putting down water stains. I've actually found... Is that, blood, is that it? One of these blood splatters works extremely well. There we go. Alright, so we don't want it to be red though because it's not supposed to be blood. So go here. We'll turn down the saturation. And then we'll turn down the brightness. And then make it just a little bit less opaque. Alright, let's see. Got that. You can move it over here to the wall. And then go this object. Single. And then hold down shift. And it's just going to change it up just a little bit. And of course, you can always come back and fix that up however you want. Too much down here. Is it there? Sometimes you gotta go back and edit it to get it exactly the way you want. But there you go. Let's see, you can quickly just give a little bit more texture to what you're doing. Totally serviceable map. And under a half an hour. Now from here, just save it, export it, and you're good to go. Uh, so that's a uh, first introduction to the new, the new Ark and Forge, at least from me. There's plenty of other videos out there giving you a good rundown. Uh, but uh, I think I'm going to keep doing this. It's sort of fun to do maps. I guess with a digital audience and uh so i guess i'll be back sometime soon until then y'all keep making maps and keep adventuring all right later oh hey i forgot one thing uh and that is that i'm now an affiliate of ark and forge which means i can get you a discount if you want to get the master's toolkit so just uh during checkout use the code saga forge uh i'll put it down below in the comments that way you know exactly how to spell it but just combined arc and forge and saga born because i'm a nerd like that uh but use that and you get five dollars off and then you can start making maps just like me so thanks a lot and have fun